So I think that's enough history for now. As cool as it is to know how humanity got to where it is, I think it might be time to give you some more practical info so you can live in this new future. So sadly, we are gonna have to move from the topic of history to the topic of economics. So I'm pretty sure you had an idea of what the future would be from your media. Science fiction and documentaries telling you that some technology would come around that would solve all the world's problems and you would live happily as all of your wants and needs are taken care of by machines. What is called a post-scarcity society? Sadly, that's not the case. We tend to live in what is called an iota scarcity society. I'm not going to go into detail, I'm not an economist, but roughly defined, it means your basic needs are met. But if you want anything substantial, you have to work for it. There are a couple of reasons why this is. The first, although it's technically possible to create a machine that can make anything you want at the press of a button, it's not practical. Making just one is extremely expensive in both time, resources, and energy. Making these universal tessium cradles, or UTCs as they are often called, incredibly inefficient for large-scale production. Making their use exclusive to large corporations, who mainly use them for research and development. It's honestly cheaper and quicker to have multiple machines, each specialized in a particular task on a sort of assembly line, which means that industry, and all that comes with it, is alive and well even now. Another reason that we don't really live in a post-scarcity society are new materials. New materials, as I explained before, are naturally occurring elements that make modern technology possible. The most important and sought after being tessium, which is used to make quantronic computers. The problem is that most new materials are impossible to replicate, which means it must be mined, making it a limited resource. And where you have a limited resource, you have an economy or nations and corporations of all sizes and influence use some form of currency to obtain that resource. Now, there is no universal currency. Each power in the human sphere has their own currency tied to their economy. Pan Oceania has the Oceana, Yu Jin has the Yuan, Hak Islam has the Dinar, and so on. Whatever its name, currency is used in similar ways. Quantronics in the Maya sphere allows a citizen to exchange money through their comm log. Devices similar to the smartphones of your time. Of course, since those exchanges are through the Maya sphere, those are easily tracked. So if you wanted to do more clandestine business, or just prefer no one knows where you got your money from, you can use flex tabs or flash bills, usually pieces of cardboard or similar material, that can be easily disposed of once the money on it is transferred over to your account. And with currency, there is a formation of economic classes. These classes, though, are a bit of a generalization. The way citizens of different nations might express themselves in each class might be very different, but I think this will give you a good idea of what to expect. The lowest class is the Demogrant class, named after the Demogrant, which is the basic unit of resources any nation is required to give their citizens, according to the O12 Council. I think your people called it a basic universal income. Now, unlike your time, people in the Demogrant class aren't poor, at least by your time standards. With nanotechnology and the efficient distribution of resources due to the myosphere and LF, everybody in the Demogrand class has enough food to eat, a place to live, and the creds to buy a screen and watch some light entertainment without having to do a day's work. Now those in the Demogrand class tend to fall into two categories. The first are what you would call the Bohemians, those who don't want to be part of the corporate rat race and are perfectly content in their current lives. Many going to the park or saving up for a show every few weeks but otherwise, fine hanging around their apartments and watching what's on TV. The other category tend to be artists, without the need to worry about working to survive. Those with an artistic bent can focus fully on their creative vision. And because of this, some of the most famous artists of the current age have come up from this economic class. I should note, although I did mention the Demogrant class is in poverty, there are places with people that even in your time would be considered poor or destitute. These are usually in frontier zones, or areas where there is active combat, places where resources are limited, and the watchful eye of O12 isn't as pervasive. The next tier in the economy is the middle class, which is a vast majority of people across the human sphere. People in this class generally work around 20 hours a week, which gives them the currency they need to have luxuries that those in the Demogrant class could never dream of. Fancy gadgets, the ability to go to concerts and parties, even trips to other worlds. If you want to do anything besides sit on your butt all day, you're gonna have to work at least a few hours a week. Of course, I say around 20 hours, 
but for those who wish to work their way up the corporate ladder, they may feel pressured to work far more to prove themselves to a company, which, like in your time, can probably lead to burnout. The next level on the economic scale is the upper class. This is usually reserved for those who choose to focus entirely on their corporate jobs, and through hard work, will reach this rank usually a few years before they retire. Theirs is a world of demotics and technology, purchasing the latest tech to make their lives easier, and just handle the more mundane aspects of their lives. Those in the middle class might go to the fridge to make a sandwich. Those in the upper class will buy the tech to have their house make that sandwich, and bring it to them on their extra comfy couch. And then we get to the elites, a level of wealth you were most likely born into. The money usually controlled by a family head, who is kind enough to give you an allowance, as long as you tow the family line. A person in the upper class may purchase tech to make their life easier. A person in the elite class has tech made for them specifically. Their clothes aren't tailored, but designed with the wearer in mind. Their vehicles are built to order. That the user has maximum comfort wherever they sit. Even a virtual walk in the park will be made by a programmer that day. And that program will be deleted when that walk is done. As you can guess, only the wealthier hypernations like Eugene and Panoceania would have individuals who would be considered elite. Other hypernations don't have the wealth, or like the nomads, actively discourage them. Those individuals in nomad communities reaching that level are, uh, encouraged to use the extra currency to fund social programs within the nomad fleets. Then we get to the hyper-elites, people in the human sphere with so much wealth that they can change what it means to be human. Many sporting body mods or enhancements that make them above the common man, at least in their view. Additionally, many tend to crave entertainments no one else has ever seen, eat food no one else has ever tasted, drive vehicles no one else has ever piloted, do activities no one else has ever done, and so on. And that, as you can guess, can lead to some extremes. Now don't get me wrong, many of these hyper elites do try to do good, but when you have enough money to make yourself essentially immortal, it does tend to alter your thinking. Alright, that's a general idea of how the economy works. It's a lot to take in, I will admit, but it does bring with it a bit of hope for you. Since you've technically been dead for a couple of decades, you have no marketable skills, so you probably won't get a job anytime soon. But on the plus side, you now know you won't be left starving in the middle of the street, so at least you got that going for you, right? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the economy of the Infinity Universe. Basically, how money moves around. It was a honestly interesting topic to take on, mainly because I read about it in the role-playing book. I'm like, it might be fun to write about, and I did it. I had no point to what I was just saying. It just, it's just words coming out. Anyway, if you like this video, and please like, subscribe, comment, press the little bell so the YouTube guys know I exist, and hopefully more people can see this content. If you really like it and you're inclined, please consider getting a little money my way to my Kofi or my Patreon. The extra money gives me a chance to work on these stories I love. Anyway, thanks for listening slash watching, and see you next time.